all five limit rules you learned are actually quite similar. They allow you to interchange limit and another operation. For example, the sum rule, instead of taking first the sum and then the limit, you may take the limits first and add up the result. So, take the limit before the sum. Something similar holds for the other laws. For example, in the power law, you can take the limit first and then the power, instead of taking power first and then the limit. And in this video, we will encounter our sixth rule, which also does this, but which is applicable to a much wider variety of functions. It allows you to take limits inside any continuous function, so not just an addition or a power. The attentive watcher may notice that a few of the previous rules are actually a special case of this sixth rule. So why don't we start with the sixth rule? I will leave that question for you to discuss with your fellow students. In this video, we'll learn how the rule works and apply to some examples. So what is the rule? If f is continuous at some point b, if uh, limit x to f of x equals b, then uh, you can basically take the limit of the composition uh, x to a f of g, you can take the limit inside, limit of f uh, of g of x equals the f limit g of x, and the limit g of x equals b, so that gives you f b. So, uh, rule 6 summarized, you can take the limit inside, and then you get this result. So, how does that work? For example, we take the limit x to 1 of the function e to the power x squared plus 1. e to the power something is uh, continuous, so we set f of x equals e to the power x, we set g of x equals x squared plus 1, and we know if you take x to 1 of g of x equals 2. You can take the sum rule, for example, uh, then we can apply our uh, uh, sixth rule about con uh, continuous functions. Limit x to 1 of f of x equals f of b uh, and b equals 2, so we get e squared. Or, as you would usually write it, limit x to 1 e to the power x squared plus 1. You take the limit inside the continuous function, so you take the limit up there at the exponential. You get this over here. e to the power limit. Uh, x to 1 of x squared plus 1, and that one is standard, and you get e squared as your limit. So that is how you use this uh, sixth rule. Well, let's do a limit rule, uh, a limit which is a little bit harder. Take x to 1 in the function arc sine, so that's already a horrible function of this expression over here 1 minus square root of x over 1 minus x. Well, arc sine is a continuous function, so we can I take the limit x to 1 in, so then we are over here. And uh, now we be, need to be a bit careful, because you cannot just plug in 1, because you will get 0 over 0, which is undefined, so we need to be a bit more careful there. But we can use our conjugate trick. Uh, we multiply by 1, by 1 plus square root of x over 1 plus square root of x, that equals 1. And why do we do that? Uh, well, then in our uh, numerator we get 1 minus square root of x times 1 plus square root of x, so that's of the form a minus b times a plus b, so that equals a squared minus b squared, or in this case 1 minus x. So we get a 1 minus x in our numerator. We just copy the denominator, 1 minus x times 1 plus square root of x. And uh, then if we take the limit of this quotient, we substitute what we just found. And since we take the limit x to 1, so x is not equal to 1, so we can cancel out those factors 1 minus x, and we end up with a 1 over 1 plus square root of x. And then we are fine, uh, because there's no danger left. Uh, you can apply the quotient rule first, and then the sum rule and the root uh, law, and take the, uh, basically take the limit in, plug in the number 1, and we, you get a 1 plus 1 over, uh, pl uh, sorry, a 1 over 1 plus square root of 1 equals one half. So there we are. So now we know how to compute this limit over here. So limit x to 1, so arc sine 1 minus square root of x o over 1 minus x equals the arc sine of 1 half equals pi over 6. Uh, if you d uh, don't remember uh, how to compute those arc signs, I put a small reminder over here. Arc sine 1 half, how do we compute it? Uh, if you set it to number y, then you know sine y equals one half, and the range of the arc sine 
uh, interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2. So and minus pi over 2 smaller equal y, smaller equal pi over 2. Then you have to solve sine y equals 1 half, so you get y equals pi over 6 plus a multiple of 2 pi, or y equals uh, 5 pi over 6 plus a multiple of 2 pi, and this condition that divides between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And let's see, uh, and, and then if you see uh, which y you can have, you see that you can only have the pi over 6, because uh, if you take a bigger k1 than 0, you are outside the interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2, and for any k2 you pick your here are also outside the interval minus pi over 2, pi over 2, and that's how you get this last equality over here. So, now you see how to apply our last rule with continuous function, which is actually pretty nice, because now this allows you to take limits inside continuous functions 